Hello there internet, my name is Squarks, and I am bringing you a let's play of Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Um, this is one of my favorite games on the Xbox right now. Um, it's it's such a cool concept, and uh, I don't know, it just, it just looks so cool, it plays so cool, it's such a neat idea and everything. And I just noticed his car looks like a, or his bed looks like a car with the trash cans and everything there, that's, that's rad as hell. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump right in. Single player. I'm uh, going to be starting a completely new game. I've beaten this game actually a couple times, because uh, the first time I actually played this game, I ended up accidentally erasing my save when I was uh, transferring over to a new Xbox, and that was kind of annoying. Um, one thing that does kind of suck about this game is the loading times. They are very long and very frequent, but it's worth it. It's this game is like really referential to like old school video games and stuff like that. Like um they have like this place which is kind of like a really condensed version of uh like the uh land from Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie. Once upon a time there lived a heroic bear called Banjo, a rather loud bird called Kazooie, and an un uh, when Banjo's sister was kidnapped, the bear and the bird rescued her from the depths of the witch's lair, overcoming many perils and speech impediments to send Gruntilda tumbling to her doom. Um, full, um, full confession here, I've never... I wouldn't say I've never, I've not... I hadn't played Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie until after I'd played Nuts and Bolts, which is this one. Um... I guess that makes me a bad gamer, I guess, I don't know, but, uh, yeah. I didn't, I never really had uh, many video games actually growing up. Most of the retro games I have played, or maybe not so much retro, but like some older game. most older games I've played, I've played fairly recently in my life. So when I was, <laughs> I love this part, I love that because uh, he's got his, his own little Xbox and N64 there. I thought that was kind of cool. These guys are living the life, gotta say. Oh yeah, I was complete. I wouldn't say lost, but I was kind of like, I feel like I'm missing a lot of in-jokes here. Like with the game he's playing in the background, I feel like that was an in-joke from the earlier Banjo-Kazooie games and I'm just not getting it. Um, very nicely rendered Xbox controller there. I was actually surprised that they put that much detail into an asset that would be used exactly once in the game. Um. I do like the character designs and everything. I think uh, it kind of kept this nice, kind of retro feel, but still looking next gen. Like the lighting effects in this game are actually really nice, especially when you get to like some of the uh, really bright environments, like the bloom effects and all that. Look, at, they they look really cool. And they make a, they make a lot of references to the character designs in the actual game, which I thought was kind of funny. Like. Um, the witch, Quintilda, is kind of like always cracking jokes about uh, Banjo's design. He's got a square nose and everything. Oh yeah, this part's kind of excruciating. Run, run, run. <laughs> Maybe I should have ordered the small pizza. It's so funny. I gotta admit, the, the intro to this game kind of sucks. Because I don't... I would rather kind of watch all this on a cutscene than have to play as fat ass. And also, it might be sacrilegious to say that, but I kind of want voiceovers. Like, I know a lot of people really get pissed off at me for that, but I don't know. I just... This guy's a boss here. The Lord of Games. Or Log, as he's more commonly known. His design always kind of confused me, because why does he have, like, mice crawling around him? It's kind of strange. But, eh, whatever. Like, here is where it gets actually really self-referential. Um, like, he keeps calling him has-beens and stuff, and, uh, if you've ever watched John Tron's, John Tron's channel, you, you know how much it, this actually pissed off a whole bunch of Banjo-Kazooie fans. Because this, it really does kind of seem mean-spirited at times, like, um, just some of the stuff that gets said to these guys. Like, he keeps calling them, like, has-beens, losers, stuff like that, just because it's an older game. And, like, these are very beloved games. Like, this is a very, like, hallowed franchise. And I guess it kind of was a, almost a dick move 
for uh, them to like take the piss out as much as they did with these guys. Uh, I love it. A uh, Viva Pinata thing. Man, Viva Pinata was a great game. I should probably get that or re repurchase that sometime. But like, because before I actually started collecting games, I uh, owned it and I resold it. And um, yeah, when you when you get to some later parts in the game, especially when you get to the log box, which is like this level that's oh my god. <laughs> This is ridiculous. When you get to this level that's sort of like inside, or what it thinks inside of an Xbox looks like, there's so many references to Rare games, like, um, I think there's like, it's either Grabbed by Ghoulies or Zombies in My Neighbor is one of the two, and like you see the disc in, inside the tray. I think it's Grabbed by, I think it's Grabbed by Ghoulies, and then, um, then you see, you actually see like Viva Pinata in, in another disc tray and stuff like that, and I think that was really cool. <laughs> like, um, Parts of this seem like a really nice homage to uh, kind of classic uh, console games, and the other half of it just seems like kind of a fuck you to classic console games, part of my language. I promised myself I wouldn't swear too much in these. Oh well, I guess that's not the window. I also don't, un don't understand why Grintilda looks like she's a robot. Again, I might be missing something because I didn't play all the way through the other games, but... Why does she look like a robot? Please tell me. Oh, this can be yours in six easy steps. Like, I understand why this thing looks like a robot, that makes sense, but why does her head look like it's like bolted together? That kind of confused me. And here is when we actually get to the crux of the gameplay, which is the vehicles. Which is another thing that pissed a lot of people right the hell off, and I could see why, because the the um, vehicle gameplay is like really, really different from what was um, originally in the uh, in the games. Because you actually like build your own uh, vehicles and race them around, or fly them around, or compete in all these different challenges. But there's virtually no platforming, which is what the uh, Banjo series was known for was a really good platforming. So understandably, fans were kind of pissed. But I like vehicles. If you've watched, uh, if you watch my vlog and any vlogs I'm going to be making, you know I really like racing games, and um, I also really like customizing vehicles. So I thought this was right up my alley, and it was. Like I really enjoyed playing this game. I, like I said, I played it more than I played through it more than once. This is gonna be my third playthrough of it. <sighs> the loading, though. Oh God, the loading. Once, uh, once this thing's, once this. Uh, Let's play gets going. I might actually cut out the loading. I won't do it for the first episode, just so you can get an idea of how atrocious it is, but I might do it for the next uh, few, or the next all of them. But you can actually make a whole lot of vehicles in here, and the physics that they use to uh, bring these vehicles to life actually makes a whole lot of sense. Because um, it's, it's, it's very much about like weight and power distribution. Um, which sounds kind of needlessly complicated, but they make it seem really simple. Like, they bring fairly complex um, concepts and make them incredibly accessible, which I think is a really great thing. Like, think of Spore, but with vehicles, and that's maybe not that, like, uh, well-rounded, but still, you kind of get the idea. Um... The overworld, I think, is pretty sweet. Um, I think it could have been a little bit bigger, but it's still pretty pretty cool. And uh, some of the levels you get to are... Um, they seem really small when you first get into them, but then uh, as the game... As you actually start exploring, you realize these, these things are really huge, especially when you're on foot. Like, it takes probably about <clears throat> 10 to 15 minutes to like, cross one of these um, like levels on foot. And it'll probably take you maybe like 5 or... Excuse me. To probably take about five or so to cross them in a vehicle, depending on how fast of a vehicle you got. And Grunty with these kind of annoying robots that don't really do much. Um, that's another thing. I kind of wish there was more threatening threats in this game. Like more. This game is really all about um, uh, like trials, like challenges and stuff. It's not really about um, fighting enemies or anything like that. It's all. It's all based on how well you can beat your own time or somebody else's time. Not really about fighting these little robot things, because these things are basically roadblocks, or speed bumps as it were. 
They don't really do anything but slow you down. Also, this cat. I don't know what is up with this cat. I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it was featured in any previous Banjo-Kazooie games. It just seems to come out of nowhere. And it's kind of a evil cat. It kind of reminds me of like the Cheshire Cat from uh, Alice in Wonderland. Oh, I never noticed how long this cutscene is. I'm running on 10 minutes here. I was originally going to make these episodes um, 10 minutes long. But uh, it seems like it's going to be a while before I actually... Okay. So I'm going to stop it here. And then uh, the next episode I'm going to um, actually do some uh, gameplay. So, until next time.